Hello summoners and welcome to another Pro Guides video. My name is Crumbs and today we'll be talking about our predictions for the weakest champions going into patch 12.15. I think everyone in all elos can agree that sometimes it can be pretty hard to win a game of League. The game itself is fairly complicated and then you have to deal with trolls and toxic teammates on top of that. So why make things even harder on yourself by picking bad champions? You want to play something you can enjoy, but how can you possibly enjoy picking a D tier champion that handicaps you from champion select in a competitive game? By avoiding the picks on this list, you're increasing the odds that you don't lose the game before it even starts. And of course, we have other meta videos to show you the right picks to go with, so be sure to check those out as well. Now let's get into it. We'll be starting things out in the top lane with Skarner. For a very, very long time, Skarner top was a sleeper OP pick. It would be pretty rare to see him, but when he did show up as a top laner, he would almost always just wreck his opponents and have a massive impact on the game. But as the meta has shifted, things have changed dramatically for him. Pretty much none of the meta matchups you run into are winnable anymore, and it's not like Skarner has crazy scaling to make a guaranteed losing lane worth it. The only way to make him viable is to play him in the jungle. He's not quite as OP there as he used to be, but he's definitely a very reliable option. Avoiding the champions on this list is a good starting point ranking up, but if you're actually serious about climbing, you should check out ProGuides.com. We have courses from all your favorite streamers and pros like CoreJJ, Aphromoo, and Xmithy to help you really understand how to play your role. And if you want a more personalized experience, we have coaches available 24-7 ready to help you become the best. Our coaches are top tier players that have spent years climbing the solo queue ladder to get to where they are now, and they're ready to share everything they've learned with you. Find our site down in the description box below. Now let's get back on topic, shall we? The other top laner you'll want to avoid is Jace. He's one of the staple examples of champions that are so heavily balanced around pro play and high elo that they end up being pretty much unviable in solo queue for the rest of us. To really play Jace well, you have to perfectly understand which form to use and when, how to cleanly combo against different opponents, and most importantly, you have to know how to manage waves. All the bullying in the world does not matter if you're mindlessly pushing waves and dying to ganks, because being just a bit behind on Jace makes him an incredibly weak champion. At really high levels of play, that's usually remedied by Jace having his jungler play around him. But in the lower ranks, that pretty much never happens. And that's all assuming he's even objectively strong in the first place. He's been so heavily nerfed that even in the highest of ranks, his performance is quite low compared to the other meta picks, with only a few one tricks really getting any consistency out of him. Taking a look now at our junglers, the first pick you should be avoiding at all costs is Nidalee. At a certain point in time, Nidalee's niche was clear cut. You could get an early lead and then snowball that lead super hard by perma invading the enemy jungler. You take away their camps, kill them, and just completely keep them out of the game. Her solo kill potential would fall off as the game went on, but it'd be fine because you could just sit back, chuck spears, heal allies, and still be more useful than your extremely behind opponent. But at the moment, things just don't work out that well. Other early game picks like Rek'Sai and Elise can 1v1 you and have better pressure when it comes to ganking lanes. And the scaling, farm-oriented picks have super fast and healthy clears, so it's not like you're gonna find many opportunities to bully them. So you just end up being outscaled by 20 minutes and have little to no impact on how the game goes after that. The other weak jungle we have for this patch is Lee Sin. It's probably safe to say that he's tied with Ryze for being the worst champion in their traditional role at the moment. Now don't be fooled by the buffs he's getting on this patch. Lee Sin's problem has never been running out of energy. His problem is that he just doesn't fill any particular niche at all. In theory, the way Lee works is snowballing super hard early on and brute forcing to close out a game when you have a huge lead. If the game stretches on too long, you would transition to supporting your team rather than solo carrying, either looking to pick an enemy with an insect or just peeling for your own champions. But in his current state, things just never go that smoothly. You just can't really snowball with Lee anymore. It's basically like with Nidalee. Against other early game junglers, you're just outpaced and you don't even get a chance. And against farm heavy opponents, you may have a bit more pressure than them early, but it isn't nearly enough to reliably shut out the game before they come online. 
Once it gets to the mid game and your foe has an item or two, they'll pretty much always be more useful in a 5v5 situation. Next up, let's take a look at the mid lane. Everyone knows by this point that Ryze sucks. Well, he isn't viable in either solo lane and picking him is kinda trolling unless you are a god at Ryze or you're Chovy in an LCK match. He 100% belongs on this list more than any other champion, but since we include him every patch until he gets changed, we'll be going over two different picks today. The first of those is Twisted Fate. Towards the end of last season, TF was a dominant pick, but at the start of this one, Riot gave him a nerf that seemed small at first, but actually ended completely gutting him. He fell to the bottom of the charts and hasn't really recovered since. We really thought the durability patch would maybe help out a bit since it nerfed assassins which are usually the biggest problem he has in lane. And while it did make dying to those picks a bit easier to avoid, it also made it harder for TF to punish other scaling picks. The other mid laner that people really need to give up on is Lucian. This one is the ones that I like to call an ego pick. Everyone wants to play Lucian mid to emulate the pros, but it just never works out like it's supposed to in solo. You sure? Lucian is a really strong bully early on in lane, but like I said about Jace, he needs pretty much the full attention of his jungler to be able to do anything with that. He has to constantly dash in to press his early game advantage, but doing so leaves him wide open to dying to ganks. And if you die just once with him, the relief of pressure on your foe is usually enough for them to get in a reset and safely lane against you for the rest of the laning phase. Like I said, a lot of the inspiration people get for playing Lucian in solo lanes is from his use in pro play, but the thing is, even at that level of play, he doesn't actually put up great numbers. He doesn't have very many mid games this season, and if you look at last year, he had nearly 800 across all regions, and he lost more of those than he won. Which brings us to today's question of the day. What are some other champions that are super overrated because of pro play? Half the champs on this list probably belong there, but let us know if there are any others that you can think of down in the comments below. Now, without further ado, let's get back on topic. When it comes to the current state of bot lane, most of the picks are actually pretty close. The difference between the best of the best traditional AD carries and most of the weak ones isn't actually all that big. You easily see Zaya or Varus have the occasional pop-off game, but there are two exceptions to that, the first of which is Aphelios. While he's still a popular pick in pro play, Aphelios is probably one of the most nerfed champions in League's history despite his relative youth. And the really sad part is that he never actually had good stats outside of High Elo to begin with. Even way back when he was first released and was Omega broken, he was just pretty good in Diamond. He only truly shined in Masters Plus. So when you take a champion that's performing below average with over 90% of the player base and nerf him a million times, it shouldn't be surprising that he ends up being completely unplayable, if you're trying to win at least. The other super weak AD carry is Zeri. Look, I'm not saying Zeri was not broken. Unlike Aphelios, she wasn't a champion that only did well in high elo. She definitely did better there, where players have the crazy mechanics to kite entire teams to their death. Sure, but she was also doing really well in the mid elos and was even viable in the lower ranks. But did she really deserve to be completely gutted like she has been? I think she was in a pretty healthy spot before her last two or three nerfs. When she had her ult, she was a super strong hyper carry, but without it, she was next to useless. This gave a clear window for both teams to work around. Now, she's just kind of bad all around. Now for our supports, the first champ we have is Set. The majority of Set players know that he's better off in a solo lane, and sometimes I suspect that if someone is playing Set support, they're really a top laner that got autofilled and refused to play something else. But for those of you that just can't give up on Set support, I ask again, please do. He just provides nothing in this role. The majority of bot lanes you play against these days are double ranged and they will keep you poked out so much you can't even look for and engage. And the few melee supports that are played are just way, way more useful than you both in 2v2s and team fights. The only niche set really fills is his ability to turn an enemy tank into a deadly bomb in team fights. But why? Why would you grief your AD carries laning face just to do that? 
Just pick him in a solo lane and you can accomplish the exact same thing. Finishing off our list, we've got Pantheon. Unlike Set, Pantheon can be somewhat useful in lane since he can actually be a deadly support when paired with a super aggressive AD carry like Tristana or Draven, but his issue is that he falls off pretty much immediately after laning phase ends. The problem is Pantheon is a super snowball champion in the mid lane. This works out for him. You can usually get fed, have a huge gold lead and level lead to just steamroll the game. But as a support, even if you're killing the enemy bot lane a lot, you aren't farming creeps and you're still going to be low level since you're splitting XP. So once the game goes past 15, you really aren't too much of a threat. But let's say you won bot lane insanely hard and you and your AD carry are super fed, but the rest of the map is doing really bad. Oftentimes, a fed carry with a good support can legit duo carry fights. But what does Pantheon provide to your AD carry in 5v5s? His single target stun isn't exactly the peak of utility and he's too squishy to really be any type of frontline. There are way better options for bullying lane that actually do stuff out of it as well. And that concludes our weakest 10 champions on patch 1215. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to subscribe so you never miss out on our meta guides and so you're always in the loop on what the best picks are. Remember to let us know some champions that are overrated because of pro play down in the comments below. And one last thing, don't forget to check out our Discord in the description box below where you can discuss League further or just hang out and be a part of our community. I can't wait to see you guys back for the next video, but until next time, good luck on the rift and may the LP gods smile down upon you.